Uh, hello to everyone. My name is Ivana Pajcin and I'm a PhD student and research assistant at the Faculty of Technology in Novi Sad in Serbia at the Department of Biotechnology and uh, Pharmaceutical Engineering. It's my great, great pleasure to participate in the Energetics 2019 and to give this lecture about utilization of glycerol from biodiesel industry for production of microbial biocontrol agents. Uh, first of all, I would like to make a short reminder about importance and necessity of biofuels utilization. Uh, as you all know, the reserves of fossil fuels, which have been used for decades as the main energy source, are near their depletion, which significantly affects their availability in the future and also the rise of their price in the global market. Furthermore, the consequences of their excessive usage in industry transport and households are more than visible, mostly when it comes to their a negative impact on the environment and the greenhouse effect uh, that could be observed in slight but uh, continuous rise of the global temperature. Hence, there is a rising need to finding a good, good uh, alternatives to replace uh, of fossil fuels and also to compete compete them. Uh, many countries uh, worldwide uh, have changed their legal frameworks uh, to comply with the sustainable development uh, goals, which is mostly observable in the reduction of fossil fuels consumption and the increase of renewable energy in the global energy consumption. Significant efforts on the scientific community uh, at the global level have been invested in the development of sustainable processes for biofuels production, which has resulted in the several globally accepted solutions for production of biogas, bioethanol, and uh, biodiesel as the most commonly used biofuels. These biofuels could be used alone or in combination with fossil fuels in order to reduce their consumption. As we can see in the figure presented in the slide, uh, in the last decade, the production of biofuels at the global level has doubled, with the most dominant role of the United States of America, Latin America, Europe, and rising Asian share in the global market. As expected, the predictions are that biofuels production and consumption will continue to rise even at higher rates. So why is there such a trend of increase of biofuels usage? Uh, first of all, they could be used as satisfactory replacements uh, for uh, fossil fuels or as supplements to, the, uh, to their uh, usage. And unlike fossil fuels, uh, they, are, they are usually obtained from renewable resources such as biomass and different waste materials. Uh, therefore, we could say that one of the advantages is renewability and also sustainable availability of raw materials necessary for their production. Furthermore, when it comes to biofuels produced from plant or algal biomass, their consumption re releases only those amounts of carbon dioxide which plants or algae uh, have previously assimilated. Therefore, there is no additional emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. All of these reasons, together with the change of leg legislative when it comes to production and usage of renewable energy resource resources, have made utilization of biofuels necessary for achieving sustainable development goals. As I have previously mentioned, the most commonly worldwide used biofuels are biogas, bioethanol, and biodiesel. Since biodiesel is in the focus of our research, I will give the brief overview of its production and properties. Biodiesel represents a mixture of alkyl esters of fatty acids obtained in the transit esterification reaction between three glycerides glycerides and alcohol, mostly methanol, in the presence of the catalyst, where the most usually used catalysts are uh, soda, sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Uh, after the separation of biodiesel, a raw glycer remains as the main byproduct of the transesterification reaction in the amount of approximately 10% compared to the biodiesel amount. Therefore, the main substrates for production of biodiesel are three glycerides originating from oats and fats. When it comes to the origin of the oils and fats used for biodiesel production, the, we can say there are four generations of biodiesel. In the production of the uh, biodiesel of the first generation, raw materials are different plant oils, uh, mostly red seed, palm, sunflower, or so soybean oil, and also annual fat. The second generation of biodiesel implies utilization of waste oils and uh, fats, mostly from frying processes from uh, restaurants or households as raw materials. The third generation of biodiesel has been produced from uh, algal oil, while the fourth generation uses genetically modified algae for production of oils necessary for biodiesel production, and it is mostly represented only in scientific facilities. 
in the pie graph presented here in the slide, you can see the structure of raw materials used for biodiesel production in Europe during the last year, where we can see almost complete dominance of the first and the second generation biodiesel produced from plant oils, uh, animal fats, and used cooking oil. A produced body look, uh, could be used in the conventional diesel engines alone or in combination with fossil diesel in different proportion, usually 5 or 20 percent of biodiesel and the rest is uh, fossil diesel. When it comes to biodiesel production at the global level, I have chosen a few graphs to uh, illustrate these global trends. In the graph presented in, on the left side, we can see leading biodiesel producing countries in the world in the last year. Uh, as expected, the most dominant country when it comes to biodiesel production is USA, followed by Brazil and Indonesia. And there are also a few leading European countries, such as Germany, France, and Spain. Similarly to the previously shown trends for, for biofuels production and consumption, in the graph presented in the upper right, we can see that uh, the prediction should suggest that biodiesel production will double in the period of uh, 15 years, with a similar prediction for dynamics of production in use between the aforementioned countries in 2025. When it comes to raw materials used for biodiesel production uh, at global level, the similar trend uh, could be observed as in Europe, with dominant usage of vegetable oils and animal fats, as can be seen in the graph in the lower right corner. On the other hand, when it comes to biodiesel production in the Republic of Serbia, the exact data about biodiesel amount which is currently being produced uh, couldn't be fine. Uh, since there is the process of modifying our legal frameworks according to the European Union legislative, there are some goals uh, set when it comes to usage of renewable energy resources. Uh, the one concerning biofuels requ requires their share of 10% in the transport sector since uh, 2020, which should encourage uh, biofuels uh, consumption and production. There are a few studies assessing the potential for biodiesel production according to the data concerning production on different plant oils in the Republic of Serbia. Uh, the average data for a time period between 2008 and 2017 are given in the table presented in the slide. We can see that the total biodiesel production potential with sunflower, soybean, and rape seed oil as dominant raw materials is estimated at around uh, 250,000 pounds. However, it's not possible to utilize the overall amount of the produced oil for production of biodiesel. Therefore, one of the other alter alternatives is to use waste oil from frying uh, processes in the restaurants or, or households, uh, whose estimated amount is around 10% of the total amount of the produced oil, and it, it is around uh, 17,000 tons. Based on these calculations, total technical capacity for biodiesel production could be estimated at 20% of the potential biodiesel amount, which counts for around uh, 50,000 uh, tons. Also, from the data presented in the slide, uh, we can see that uh, production capacity of the South Biodiesel plants in the Republic of Serbia is around uh, 100,000 tons. Uh, indicated that with the currently installed capacities, the amount of the produced biodiesel could be doubled in the Republic of Serbia. After the introduction about biofuels and biodiesel production at the global level, level and in our country, now it is time to say a few words about raw glycerol or crude glycerol, which is the main byproduct of biodiesel production. As it was previously mentioned, uh, this byproduct emerges in the amount of around 10% compared to the produced biodiesel amount. Considering the global trend of biodiesel production increase, in the graph given in the slide, we can also see the, the worldwide increase of the available amount of raw glycerol. Since raw glycerol remains after biodiesel separation and purification, it contains large amounts of uh, impurities, impurities arising from biodiesel production process, such as methanol and catalyst remains, as well as some undesired products of the transesterification reaction, such as soaps. It also contains different impurities uh, present in the raw material uh, used for biodiesel production, especially if waste tools and fats were used as raw materials. In the raw glycerol, total, total glycerol amount counts for 60 to 80 percent, while the rest are impurities. Uh, the raw glycerol purification uh, process uh, and at obtaining pure glycerol is very uh, not is, is not economically viable, uh, considering the cost of this procedure in comparison with production cost and final market price of the commercial glycerol. Due to increasing amounts of, on, of this effluent on the global market, its price has been gradually decreasing, which has significantly affected and raised the cost of biodiesel production. 
On the other hand, due to large amounts of impurities, uh, raw glycerol could, could not be simply disposed in the environment. Therefore, rising amounts of this byproduct has become a worldwide problem, and it is considered that solving uh, this problem uh, will significantly affect the future of uh, global biodiesel production. There are a few scientific approaches. Uh, there are two scientific approaches uh, to utilize this raw glycerol, such as combustion for energy production, chemical conversion usage in animal feed, but one of the promising ways is its com microbial conversion to different value-added products. Microbial conversion of raw glycerol implies its usage as carbon source for production of microbial biomass and different metabolites by different beneficial microorganisms. The present excess of raw glycerol uh, from biodiesel production, production makes usage of glucose as the main uh, carbon source very extensive. Besides, glucose has also uh, been applied in the production of food and feed, which is not the case with the raw glycerol. Glycerol also shows higher uh, degree of reduction co uh, compared to sugar, so during glycerol fermentation, the yield of ethanol and formic acid or ethanol or hydrogen is doubled compared to fermentation of uh, glucose because uh, during that process, the half of the sugar amount is lost during fermentation uh, due to production of carbon dioxide. Uh, numerous microorganisms can metabolize glycerol aerobically, and uh, also there are some microorganisms that can uh, that that can metabolize uh, glycerol anaerobically, and uh, all of them are presented here in the slide. Uh, utilization of raw glycerol as carbon source in microbial conversion has resulted in production of uh, different organic solvents, uh, hydrogen, organic acids, biopolymers, pigments, and biosurfacants. Uh, in the right side of the slide, you can see some of the value-added products obtained from raw glycerol from the biodiesel production by using bacteria of the genus Bacillus as a producing microorganism. So because one of the Bacillus producing strains has also been used as a producing microorganism in our study. Therefore, the aim of the study was to investigate the, the suitability of raw glycerol from biodiesel production as substrate for production of biocontrol agents effective against pathogenic Xanthomonas strains by using the Bacillus as a producing microorganism. Uh, so in this study, one of the problems we were trying to solve is to utilize raw glycerol, and on the other hand, it was to suppress uh, pathogens from the genus uh, Xanthomonas. So why are those uh, phytopathogens so important? Uh, here in the slide, you can see the symptoms of the two major plant diseases caused by, by these uh, phytopathogenic bacteria. Uh, one of them is black rot of cabbage and other prosperous crops caused by xanthomonas campestris, pepper campestris. And the other one is bacterial spot of pepper and tomato caused by xanthomonas uvisicatoria. In our study, phytopathogenic strains presented here in the slide and used as test microorganisms were uh, isolated from the diseased plants from symptoms of black rot and bacterial spot. As it is presented here uh, in the table uh, that you can see in the slide, these plants or cabbage and uh, pepper are among the most important vegetable crops in the Republic of Serbia, both when it comes to production amount and also their representation in human diet. Since uh, severe black rot and bacterial spot infection can cause crop loss up to 50% of the total produced amount, it's clear that the lack of the efficient methods for management of these plant diseases can cause significant economic losses. Current agricultural practice offers, offers only resources with limited efficacy in uh, prevention, uh, control, and suppression of these diseases, such as usage of healthy planting materials, seed disinfection, crop rotation, and application of copper-based Bactericides, whose excessive usage has led to the development of pathogens resistance. Since all of these methods have shown only limited success in practice, there is an urgent need to find alternative for management of plant diseases caused by phytopathogenic xanthomonas strains. So one of the suitable alternatives is biological control or usage of beneficial organisms or their products to suppress or prevent plant diseases caused by different phytopathogens. Uh, biological control has emerged as alternative to agrochemicals whose utilization represents a significant burden for the environment and also potential risk for human health. Biopesticides uh, represent the main biocontrol agents, and they could be classified into, into three groups according uh, to their active components. Those are uh, biopesticides biopesticides that contain living organisms, such as microorganisms, insects, or nematodes, biochemical pesticides, which mostly contain different plant extracts uh, or insect pheromones, and plant-incorporated protectants uh, that represent genetic, genetically modified plants with incorporated genes uh, for resistance against different pests. 
Marked organisms with a special emphasis on the genera Bacillus streptomyces and trichoderma are among the most usually used by control agents, er, uh, agents and represent uh, an active component in over 95% uh, of the commercially avail available biopesticides. As a producing microorganism in our study was Bacillus salazensis. Uh, I will give a brief overview uh, of the reasons why this strain is suitable can candidate for biological control of plant diseases. And the strain we have used uh, was isolated from fresh cheese and identified by using 16S ribosomal DNA sequencing. Uh, there are a few characteristics that, that make this strain suitable uh, by control agents. Uh, first of all, uh, there is uh, rapid growth and multiplication ability to adjust to different ecological conditions, correlation ability, plant growth promotion creates induction, induction of systemic resistance in plants, but most of all, it is production of wide spectra of different antimicrobial metabolites, including antibiotics, enzymes, lipopeptides, and volatile organic compounds. Also, this strain shows uh, the ability of very efficient plant colonization, including endothetic colonization or colonization of the plant inner tissue, which is very important trait for biological control or of vascular plant uh, pathogens such as fetal pathogenic and strains. When it, can, uh, when it comes to uh, the selection of the producing microorganism, one of the limiting factors was the ability of the producing strain to metabolize raw glycerol from the production. Since raw glycerol contains uh, around 60 to 80 percent of glycerol and the rest are impurities, the major problem when it comes to its utilization in microbial bioprocesses is potential inhibitory effects of those impurities on the microbial uh, metabolic pathways. In our previous study, different strains of the genes bacillus were investigated for production of bio control agents using using medium based on raw glycerol. Uh, all of the tested strains have showed certain antimicrobial activity or ability to metabolize raw glycerol. Among the tested strains, Bacillus salazensis has shown the highest antimicrobial potential. Therefore, this strain was employed, was employed as a producing microorganism in the study presented here. However, uh, the biotechnological process for production of the efficient biocultural agent is very expensive, mostly due to high demands concerning cultivation medium composition, cultivation condition sterility, and the need to produce cultivation growth with high number of, of viable microbial cells. In biotechnological production, cultivation medium is used as source of food or nutrients uh, for the producing microorganism. The main nutrients that microorganisms require for their growth multiplication and production of metabolites are carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus sources, as well as some additional nutrients such, such as magnesium, sulfur, zinc, ferrum, etc. Uh, one of the uh, aims of our study was to utilize zero glycerol from biodiesel production provided by the company Biodiesel Co. from Serbia as carbon source source in this uh, bioprocess for production of microbial biocontrol agents in order to investigate this, this alternative uh, for raw glycerol utilization. But on the other hand, we are also trying to reduce cultivation medium cost by using waste material from some other industry. Therefore, in our previous research, the cultivation medium composition was optimized in such a way to contain all the necessary nutrients for the producing microorganism Bacillus salazensis and also to maximize its antimicrobial activity against its pathogenic xanthomonas strains. The optimized composition of the cultivation medium as well as its pH value are given in the table presented in this slide. On the other hand, in order to successfully produce high amounts of viable microbial cells, it is necessary to provide appropriate cultivation conditions, mostly in terms of temperature and mass transfer. In this study, uh, cultivation of the producing microorganism was carried out in a laboratory scale director with a working volume of two liters under the following cultivation conditions, temperature of 28 Celsius degrees, uh, agitation rate of 250 around per minute, aeration rate of 1 UEM, and duration of 96 hours. During the cultivation of the producing microorganism Bacillus salazans in a laboratory scale bioreactor, uh, bioprocess progress was monitored by using different parameters and also using the cultivation growth uh, samples taken at predefined times of cultivation. Biomass content was determined by the gravimetric uh, method as the direct indicator of uh, change of cell number. In the graph on the left, uh, which shows the change of biomass content during the cultivation, we could observe a typical bacterial growth 
microcurrent. Since in optimal mode, the producing microorganism was portrayed using uh, the commercial medium or nutrient growth, which contains mostly simple sugars and amino acids as the main nutrients for, uh, to support microbial growth. Uh, the producing microorganism required certain times to adjust to metabolizing different nutrients after transferring the inoculum uh, in the medium based on road water. Therefore, uh, during the first 24 hours of uh, cultivation, only slight change in biomass content could be observed due to lag or adaptation phase of lacillus calidensis. After that, exponential or log growth phase could be noticed between 24th and 48th hour of cultivation with sharp increase in biomass content, indicating the ability of the producing microorganism to successfully metabolize raw glycerol as carbon source necessary for synthesis of cell components. Also, since during preparation of the cultivation medium, none of the nitrogen sources has been added, it can be concluded that raw glycerol from biodiesel production also contains some uh, nitrogen compounds. Since nitrogen is essential nutrient for synthesis of DNA and proteins as the major cell component, uh, which is indicated by the uh, significant increase in biomass content during the exponential growth phase. Uh, the presence of nitrogen in glycerol is also confirmed in other studies which have investigated the composition of glycerol from biodiesel production. After 16th hour of cultivation, a stationary phase, uh, growth phase could be observed with only slight changes in biomass content until the end uh, of the cultivation. Also, it can be noticed that Bacillus pelicans' biomass content has increased almost ninefold during the cultivation. Uh, the residual content of the main nutrients, uh, glycerol, uh, total nitrogen, and total phosphorus, was determined using the appropriate analytical uh, techniques in order to monitor nutrient consumption and its relation to bacillus pelicans' growth and antimicrobial activity. Uh, based on the results presented in the figure uh, on the right, uh, it can be concluded that consumption of glycerol, uh, nitrogen, and phosphorus was uh, in strong correlation with bacillus pelicans' growth. The most intense consumption of these nutrients was observed during the exponential growth phase due to utilization of these nutrients for building cell components, while in the stationary growth phase after 60 hour of cultivation, only moderate consumption of nutrients uh, could be noticed. When it comes to uh, conversion of nutrients, uh, it can be concluded that almost 77% of glycerol was converted to biomass or microbial metabolite during cultivation, which represents satisfying the value for utilization of this waste material even at larger scales. The presence of nitrogen compounds in real glycerol is also confirmed by uh, detecting the residuals of these nutrients in cultivation growth samples, while around 60% of this nutrient was consumed during the cultivation. When it comes to phosphorus sources, a, significant, a significantly lower conversion uh, coefficient was observed, which indicates uh, the need to further optimize cultivation medium composition in terms of phosphorus content, or to decrease the initial concentration of these nutrients in the cultivation medium, which also contributes to the reduction of the cultivation medium cost. Antimicrobial activity of the cultivation growth samples uh, containing biomass of bacillus pelicans and also the, met the metabolites produced during the cultivation in a laboratory scale bio bioreactor uh, was tested in vitro against three uh, phytopathogenic xanthomonas uh, strain strains using the diffusion disk method. Inhibition zone diameters as the main indicators of an antimicrobial activity were measured and are presented here in uh, the slide. The results have indicated that antimicrobial activity of the cultivation bread samples is also in a good correlation with Bacillus valazensis growth. This result is supported by numerous scientific reports claiming that competition for nutrients and growth space where living cells of biocontrol agents have the most important role in, su in suppressing phytopathogenic microorganisms is one of the most common mechanisms of antimicrobial activity. Also, a slight increase in inhibition zone diameters could be observed uh, even during the stationary growth phase after 60th hour of cultivation. Uh, since Bacillus pelicans is well known for, for producing different uh, types of secondary metabolites, many of which express antimicrobial activity, it is justified to assume that this producing strain of also possesses the ability to synthesize some of the metabolites expressing antimicrobial activity against phytopathogenic xanthomonas strains. Uh, while the fungal, uh, uh, activity, antifungal activity of the psilocellus has been thoroughly investigated, it has also been proven that compounds from serpentine and lacinomycin families express antibacterial activity. 
and therefore further research in the field of identification of antimicrobial compounds produced uh, by Bacillus pelagensis strain used in this study and using medium based on raw glycerol will be conducted with a special emphasis on investigation of lipopeptide compounds production. Hence, one of the main conclusions of this study is that the producing microorganism Bacillus pelagensis successfully metabolizes serogliceral from radical production. Therefore, serogliceral presents a suitable substrate for production of biocontrol agents with satisfying in vitro antimicrobial activity against phytopathogenic entomonas strains which cause cab cabbage and pepper diseases. In this way, it is confirmed that microbial conversion of raw glycerol to uh, value-added products should be considered, considered as one of potential solutions to uh, the problems related to increasing star cluster of raw glycerol from binding to extreme. Our future research in the field of production of microbial biocontrol agents by using raw glycerol as substrate will include identification of the mechanisms of action of the producer by control agents as well as their testing in plants and in field. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ivana, for um, your interesting presentation. Um, I'm inviting all the interested researchers to contact you via your contact that will be soon um, available in the proceedings. And uh, thank you once again for being part of the, the conference. Thank you very much.